Greetings boys and girls. In today's video, we are going to be talking about subtracting across zeros. And this is a great skill because in real life, especially when we're talking about money, we are often going to have times when we are subtracting numbers across zeros. For our lesson today, we're going to start with a look at a few scenarios. The first one involves some twin brothers. Twin brothers Darren and Josh were given a $200 gift card to GameStop for their 10th birthday. They purchased four games which totaled $129.86 once taxes were added. How much money was left on their gift card after they made this purchase? Okay, so I want to first understand the problem. The first thing I noticed is that we had two brothers that were given $200. Well, actually, they were given a $200 gift card. So on that gift card, there was $200, and it was a gift card to go to GameStop. The next thing I noticed is that they purchased four games, and the total of those four games was $129.86 once they had paid for their taxes. Then, I noticed that there's a question that we are being asked. How much money was left on their gift card after they made this purchase? Now, when I see how much was left, that generally tells me that this is a subtraction problem. So I need to start with the $200, and then I'm going to need to subtract the $129.86. So I'm going to essentially have to answer this problem, but I can't really solve it written straight across like that. I'm going to need to stack it. When I get ready to stack this number, I want to be sure that I line up my place values. I do see that in one of my numbers I have a decimal point, so I know I want to put point under point. but when I'm looking at the 200, I don't see a decimal point. Well, I'm remembering. Even when I don't see a decimal point, I know it's right there at the end, and it can be followed by 00. zero. So if I have $200, I can either write 200 without the decimal point, or I can add my decimal point and add my two zeros. So I'm going to do that, because I'm now subtracting $129.86 from this. Okay. Now it seems like this should be a rather easy part. Here's the trick we want to keep in mind. When I get ready to subtract, I am going to start on the left, or on the right. Sorry guys, I'm starting on the right with my smallest place value. So when I'm looking on the right, I have 0 minus 6. Well, I have more on the floor. My 6 is larger than my 0. So if I have 0, I cannot possibly take six away. I need to get something to add so that I can have 10, because I can say 10 minus 6, but I can't borrow from the next place value, because look, the next place value, I have a 0. Then I look to the next place value after that, there's a 0. I look to the next place value to the left, and there's another 0, and I don't finally find something until I get to the 2. So now with the 2, I can take 1 away. Now I'm not going to look at this as 2. I'm going to look at it as a form of 2,000. So if I have 2,000, I'm taking 1 away from 2,000. And that would leave me with 1,999. Okay. Now, I did say it's a form of 2,000 because notice we do have that decimal point there, okay? So now I took one away, and I can add to my 0. Now I have 10. 10 minus 6 would be 4. 9 minus 8 would be 1. 9 minus 9 would be 0. 9 minus 2 would be 7. 1 minus 1 would be nothing. So I see they have a remaining balance on their gift card of $70.14. Now I do want to tell you guys, once we 
regroup the first time when we're subtracting um, across zeros, you will find that it is so much easier to just finish going across because you are most likely not going to have to do more regrouping. We're now going to take a look at another scenario. In this scenario, Shannon loves making bedazzled hats to wear and to share with her friends. At the start of the week, she had 5,000 bedazzling jewels. After making her a hat for a friend, she realized that she used 2,420 of her beads. Now she wants to know how many are left and if she has enough beads to make a matching hat for herself using the same number. Okay, I want to first visualize. I'm visualize what, visualizing what's going on with this problem, so I see a hat that she's bedazzled. Okay, great. And so she started with 5,000 jewels, okay? And then she used 2,420 of the jewels on a hat, and now she wants to know how many are left. We remember that question from before. And if she has enough to make a matching hat for herself using the same number. So I really have two questions here that I need to answer. The first question that I need to answer is how many jewels uh, are left. So to answer that question, I will take how many she started with, which was 5,000, and I will simply subtract the 2,420 from that. All right, so when I start subtracting this, I have 0 minus 0. Well, that's easy. That's nothing. Then I get to five, or 0 minus 2 in the tens place. Well, if I have 0, I cannot take 2 away from that. So I need to borrow, because I need to get 1 to add to that. And so I go to the next place, and I have another 0. That's not helpful. But thankfully, the following place, there's finally a number. You see, I have 50. So now I can look at that 50, and I can take 1 away from 50. So 1 less than 50 is simply 49. And now I can put my 10, adding 10 to my 0. And now I have 10 minus 2, which equals 8. 9 minus 4 equals 8. 5, and then 4 minus 2 equals 2. So I see she has 2,580 beads left. That's the first part of the question. Now we're trying to see, does she have enough to make a matching hat for herself? Well, how many did she use the first time? The first time she used 2,420, so yes, she does have enough to make a matching hat for herself. Yes, she has enough. Now, if I wanted to ask a follow-up question, I could also ask how many beads would she have left over after that? And if I was answering that question, I would simply take 2,580 and then subtract it, um, subtract 2,420, from that number, and I would see how many she'd have left after her two hats. We're going to look at one more example of subtracting across zeros. Now this one is, it was actually an interesting scenario to me. Okay, now we have some great shows here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is not only a cool show that's been around for years, but it's a show that costs $700,000 to produce. Just one episode. I'm not even saying like the like five episodes. Just one episode costs $700,000 to make. That's a lot of money, okay? Now, to make a 30-minute episode of an older Nickelodeon show, The Rugrats, this is one that I grew up watching, it actually costs $532,000. $309 to create. That's still a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. How much more does an episode of 
the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cost than an episode of the Rugrats? Ooh, this is a fun question. So, they gave us some information. They told us the cost of producing one episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then they gave us the information of producing one episode of the Rugrats. And now they're asking how much more does an episode of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cost than an episode of the Rugrats. Now when I see things like how much more, that's a comparison problem. We know that one costs more than the other. So with this how much more, that is like a trigger that lets me know I'm going to be subtracting. So what am I subtracting? I know I have 700,000 and I know I have 532,309. I want to put the larger number on first because that's the one that has more. So I'm going to be subtracting 700,000 and 532,309. Now that my numbers are stacked up, I'm ready to go ahead and start subtracting. Oh man, I bet you guys can guess. I'm in this predicament that I've been in three times now. Here it is. I have to do a subtraction step, 0 minus 9, and I find that the number on the floor, the number on the bottom, is larger than the number on the top. Therefore, I can't, if I have nothing, I cannot take 9 away. So what I need to do is I need to go and borrow. I need to regroup. I need to shift some things around so that I can get 10 to add to my ones place. Now I go to the next place value and there's nothing there. So then I go to the next place value, there's nothing there. The next place, still nothing. Next place, still nothing. And I finally find something in the seven. So now when I regroup this, I'm looking and it is a form of 70,000. I know we're looking and we see it's in the hundreds place, like 700,000, but I'm not counting the first zero. So now I'm thinking, what is one less than 70,000? That would be 69,999. So that's, that's what that would have been regrouped to. Now that I have my 10, I can now do my subtracting. 10 minus 9 is 1. 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 3 is 6. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. I'm going to put my comma to separate my thousands period from my units period, and I am left with 167,691. And what is this? I'm talking about money, because it was asking me how much more. So I put my dollar sign to represent that I'm talking about money. So it costs an additional $167,691 to produce the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I can agree, because I think the animation looks just a tad bit more, you know, advanced on the Ninja Turtles than things looked on the first episodes of the Rugrats. Well, boys and girls, that was today's video. I hope that you have completed your accountability sheet as we've done this. Make sure you have your box around your numbers so that you understand what's going on. So, in the voice of one of our old school favorite cartoons, Thanks for watching.